The DJI Osmo Pocket 3 is an incredibly capable little camera, but after using it since release, I have found 10 tips and tricks to make it even better, allowing you to easily cancel a recording so you don't clog up your precious memory card space with clips you won't use, use the Memo app to get functions not available on the Pocket 3 itself, get more unique and interesting angles when filming, and more. Let's jump right in and take a look. Now, if you're new around here, welcome. My name's Matthew, and I create videos helping you get the most from your DJI Osmo Pocket 3, but also drones, action cameras, gimbals, and more. Everything from the best settings to get up and running quickly, to tips and tricks to help you get more cinematic videos and better looking images from your gear. So if you would like to see more of that, then please consider subscribing by clicking that subscribe button down below. And when you're down there, make sure to check the notification bell so that you will be alerted when my new videos are released. It would be greatly appreciated. Okay, let's dive into the first tip, and that is how to cancel a recording. Now this is a fantastic new feature that was recently added with a firmware update to the Pocket 3. So you want to make sure that you have connected your Pocket 3 to the Memo app and downloaded the latest firmware to it to make sure that you get its functionality. Now, if you're someone like me, whenever you're capturing clips with the Pocket 3, instead of just being able to capture that perfect shot the first time you hit record, you generally make a few mistakes along the way, and this results in you starting and stopping a recording multiple times until you get that perfect movement. So instead of only having one clip, you generally get four, five, maybe even 10 if you're really being a perfectionist for every subject that you want to capture with the Pocket 3. And this can clog up your memory card very quickly. Well, instead of having to go into the media library and delete these individually to free up some space, or pull the memory card, put it into a computer and delete the files you aren't going to use that way, with this new feature, you can actually just cancel a recording on the fly so that it's not saved to the memory card. So if you start a recording with the Pocket 3 and you make a jerky movement or your subject drifts off center and you realize you aren't going to use the clip, all you have to do is press and hold on the record button. You will see a bin icon appear. And once the red ring fully completes around it, the current video you are recording will be deleted and it won't be stored to that memory card, meaning it won't clog up valuable storage. Now something I find incredibly useful when using the Pocket 3 is the DJI Memo app itself because this app has a lot of functionality that isn't available on the Pocket 3. So not only can you preview what the camera is seeing, which is great if you're recording yourself, maybe you have the Pocket 3 on a tripod out of reach where you can't see the screen, or you can preview what the camera is seeing on the Memo app to make sure your subject is centered. You can also start or stop a recording remotely using the shutter button, but if you press the settings icon and scroll down, you can turn on something called overexposure alert and a histogram. Now overexposure alert is incredibly useful, especially if using manual exposure, because it's quite hard to see sometimes on the Pocket 3 screen itself because it's so small, if any parts of your image are overexposed. And this can lead to scenarios that after you've recorded the footage and have come home and are previewing it on the computer, that you might realize that parts of the image, such as the sky, are all white and overexposed. Well, if you use the Memo app, the overexposure alert will display zebras on any parts of the image that are overexposed. And this means if you have overexposed an area of the image, such as the sky, you will see this zebra pattern appear on it. So you will know to decrease the exposure so that that area of the image isn't completely white and overexposed. Another super useful feature to check your exposure is correct is this histogram. When you turn this feature on, if you go back to the Memo app camera view, you can see we have a histogram graph on the screen. Now a histogram is basically a graph that represents the tones of an image. So again, if it's a bright sunny day and you're struggling to see the Pocket 3 screen to check the exposure, you can instead look at this graph to see a visual representation of that exposure to double check to make sure nothing is overexposed or underexposed. Now, simply put, the way this histogram works is that you want the majority of the graph to be in the center. If the graph is crushed all the way to the right, 
This will let you know that the image is overexposed. And if the graph is crushed all the way to the left, this will let you know that the image is underexposed. Now the last feature of this app and arguably the most useful is the ability to log the exposure. And I'm not really sure why this functionality isn't built in to the Pocket 3 itself. Now logging the exposure is super useful if you're using the automatic exposure mode on the Pocket 3. Because if you're moving the Pocket 3 around between dark areas and light areas, you will get these jarring exposure shifts. But if you press and hold on the memo screen until you see a small yellow padlock appear, this now locks the exposure. And what this means is as you pan from right to left or move around between dark and light areas, you won't get them exposure shifts and this will look so much more professional. Now doing this also has a massive secondary benefit and that is it will lock focus. Now when you're moving the pocket three around, it will be continually adjusting the focus to keep the subject in front of it sharp, but you can run into scenarios where you see these focus changes as you're moving the pocket three around. And again, this can look quite jarring in your footage. If you take a look at this example where I'm rising up from behind this wall to reveal the subject, you can see that just as I rise the camera above the wall, there is this massive focus shift and this doesn't look very professional. But if we start with the camera pointed at our subject and on the memo app, press and hold on top of that subject again until you see that yellow padlock appear and then lower the pocket three down behind the wall. Now, when we hit record and rise the pocket three up over that wall, you won't see this focus shift because the focus has been locked to our subject. And again, this just looks so much more professional. Now, if you are out using the Pocket 3 and you are moving between dark and light areas and you don't want them exposure shifts, but you don't have the Memo app available to you, well, I have a quick tip that will allow you to stop them exposure shifts happening. Now, we can't lock the exposure on the Pocket 3, unfortunately, but what we can do is change into manual exposure mode. So what I like to do is swipe from right to left on the screen, press the exposure icon, and then if you look at the top left and top right of this screen, you can see what shutter speed and ISO the camera has currently automatically set for the Pocket 3. So what I like to do is make note of these values, then change into manual mode by pressing the small M on the bottom left of the screen, and then simply set the shutter speed on the left side of the screen and the ISO on the right side of the screen to the values that we took note of. Now, once you've done that, simply press confirm, and now as you move your pocket three around, you won't get them exposure shifts because the camera is locked to the shutter speed and ISO you have set. Now, if you're using the pocket three for vlogging and you find it's just too close to your face, even with the wide angle lens, well, you can actually use the mini tripod to be able to get the pocket three further away from you. So what you first want to do is to attach the handle with the quarter inch thread to the bottom of the pocket three. And then you can simply screw the mini tripod onto the bottom of it. And what this does is it makes the pocket three longer so that now if you hold the pocket three by that mini tripod, you can actually get the pocket three further away from you. And this will allow you to get more of yourself in the frame. Now, speaking of accessories, one I find makes the pocket three a whole lot better is this expansion adapter. Chances are, if you have another action camera, you have a lot of other accessories that use the thumb screw to attach. But because the Pocket 3 only has a quarter inch thread attachment, you can attach them to it. Well, using this expansion adapter, all you have to do is open up the front of the cage, place the Pocket 3 inside, and then there is a clamp on the side that closes this cage around it securely. And on the back, we have these mounting fingers that allow us to use accessories that use the thumb screw. So for example, we could use this Joby tripod, which I find to be fantastic because the arms can articulate to any angle so that you can keep the Pocket 3 level on any surface. You could also attach it to this backpack strap mount and I find this to be fantastic for getting POV shots. Sometimes you want to be able to have both hands in the clip you're capturing with the Pocket 3 instead of having to hold it with one. And so by attaching it to my backpack strap, this allows me to use both hands in my video clips. Now here's a top tip. If you are using a wearable mount like this, the Pocket 3 actually has a wearable mode, which you can access by swiping down from the top of the screen pressing the settings button and then scrolling down and tapping into the wearable mode option. Now, once you press confirm, you won't actually be able to adjust anything by touching the Pocket 3 screen. 
And this is great because it prevents you from accidentally brushing up against it when it's mounted to you and changing some of these settings. Now to exit wearable mode, all you have to do is swipe up on the screen. Now with this expansion adapter, you could also attach accessories such as the Osmo Action 1.5 meter extension rod, which works great as a selfie stick if you want to be able to get the Pocket 3 further away from you to get wider shots. And it also allows you to attach the GoPro quick release mount. And now you can use this with all your favorite GoPro accessories, such as this suction cup mount. Now, one of my favorite features on the Pocket 3 is a feature called built-in mic audio backup. And this is a super useful feature for two reasons. Firstly, it can be used as a redundancy feature so that you never end up with any clips that you have no audio for. And secondly, it can be used to get more unique audio for your clips. So first let's take a look at how we use this for redundancy. So to turn this feature on, you want to swipe down from the top of the Pocket 3 screen, press the settings button, and then scroll down and turn on the built-in mic audio backup feature. Now when this is turned on and you're using the mic 2, the audio being captured from the mic 2 will be stored to the video clip, but the Pocket 3 will also store a second audio file to the micro SD card, storing the audio being recorded by the internal microphones at the same time. So if you're recording a long vlog and halfway through it the mic 2 runs out of battery and you don't realize, instead of having a clip with no audio that can't be used, you can simply swap the audio out for that secondary audio file that was recording the internal microphone audio and now that clip can be salvaged. So that's great, but how can we use this feature to get more unique audio in our clips? Well, let me give you an example. Let's say I want to do a vlog at the beach and I want to get the sound of waves crashing over the rocks. Well, if you've ever tried to do this, what you've probably find is the noise of them waves drowns out the sound of you talking. But with this feature, what you can do is you could put the Pocket 3 on a tripod, then with the mic to attach to myself, I could walk further away from the noise of them waves I could also turn on the noise cancellation feature on the mic too, so that the audio of me talking won't have the noise of the waves draining out the sound of my voice, but the internal microphones on the Pocket 3 will be capturing all that ambient sound to a secondary audio file. And then in your video editor, you can mix the sound of these two audio files together so you can adjust the audio level of that ambient sound so that you have the noise of the waves crashing, but they're not drowning out the sound of you talking. It's an incredibly useful feature. Now, another feature that makes the Pocket 3 so much better, and specifically the Mic 2, is the auto power off feature. Now, when the Pocket 3 came out, the Mic 2 wouldn't automatically turn off. So you could encounter a scenario where after you were done using it, you remembered to turn off the Pocket 3, but you forgot to turn off the Mic 2. And then you would put it back into the case. And maybe a couple of hours later, when you pulled it out to use it, because it's been sitting draining the power the entire time in that bag, the Mic 2 would now be dead. And this could ruin an entire day's filming. But with a recent firmware update to the Mic 2, Whenever the transmitter is not connected to a device and is not recording independently for more than 15 minutes, it will automatically power off. So you won't encounter that scenario. Now to get access to this feature, if you haven't already, you will need to update the firmware for your mic too. And this isn't as straightforward as updating the firmware on the Pocket 3. So what you need to do is go to the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 downloads page, and I will put a link to that on the screen now and in the description down below. And then you need to scroll down until you see the firmware section and download the file Osmo Pocket 3 DJI Mic 2 Transmitter Firmware. Then what you need to do is connect the Mic 2 to your computer using a USB-C cable. And once it has been recognized, you need to copy that firmware file to the root directory of the Mic 2. Now, once you have placed the firmware package file onto the root directory of the Mic 2, you can simply disconnect it from your computer. And then once you turn the transmitter on, it will start to update automatically. Now, an accessory I find myself using a lot with the Pocket 3, especially when trying to get unique angles when filming alone, is this magic arm. Now, a magic arm is an articulating arm with a clamp at one end, and a quarter inch screw on the other. And what this allows me to do is to attach this articulating arm to the Pocket 3 via the handle with the 
quarter inch thread on it. And then I can clamp the pocket three pretty much anywhere using this clamp on the other end. And you can simply place this articulating arm at any angle. And once you screw this handle in the middle, it locks them arms solidly into place. And this allows me to securely mount my pocket three in really unique and interesting places to get really unique and interesting angles. So as an example, something I used this for recently was I wanted this shot off me driving a car from the inside and so I simply attached this magic arm to one of the headrests in the car and this held the pocket three securely in place. But the possibilities for this are literally endless. You could also maybe use this as a clamp if you want to use the pocket three as a webcam for example. You could simply clamp this to your desk and then you could move the articulating arm to get the perfect angle of yourself, lock it in place, and now you have a super secure mount for your Pocket 3 when using it as a webcam. These are so secure in fact, I actually have the camera I'm filming this on now secured using a magic arm as well. These are fantastic accessories. Now if you're out capturing footage with the Pocket 3 by yourself and you want to get footage of the Pocket 3 tracking you, maybe walking past, but you have forgotten the little mini tripod, then do not just place it down on its bottom because it's not very secure, it's very wobbly, and if even a gentle breeze blows, the Pocket 3 will fall over. And I've mentioned time and time again, the Pocket 3 is a very delicate camera, so if it falls over, even from a very low height, chances are something will break. But I do have an alternative for you. Instead, you can place the Pocket 3 down flat, and now you will find it's much more secure, and it's not going to run the risk of falling over. And if you have the gimbal hanging over the edge of something, then you will still be able to use the tracking functionality on the Pocket 3 so that you can get them shots off yourself walking past, for example, without running the risk of the Pocket 3 falling over. Now the next tip I have is actually to do with the tracking on the Pocket 3. Now the Pocket 3's active tracking is fantastic. It's one of its best features and as mentioned is great if you're filming alone to get these really dynamic clips where you can put the Pocket 3 down and then have the camera follow you around. But an area I don't recommend using it is when you're vlogging to the camera in selfie mode. Now you might be tempted to turn on tracking when using selfie mode on the Pocket 3 so that it keeps your face centered at all times. But what you'll find when reviewing the footage is your camera is constantly moving as your arm moves around to keep your face centered. And this constant jittery camera movement can look incredibly jarring. Instead, I recommend just keeping the tracking feature turned off and that way your camera won't be making all these constant movements. And then to make sure your face is centered in the frame, all you have to do is every 10 or 15 seconds, glance down at the screen, make sure you're centered and then continue vlogging. And in my opinion, this doesn't look anywhere near as bad as having the camera constantly do these jittery movements. So I recommend when vlogging, don't turn tracking on. Now another super useful feature of the Mic 2 that you might not know about is the fact that this doesn't just work with the Pocket 3. This microphone can work with a range of other devices that you might own, such as an Action 4, your iPhone, or even a MacBook. Now if you want to use the Mic 2 with your DJI Action 4 action camera, you can now do this due to a recent firmware update to that action camera, as this brought functionality to allow the Mic 2 to wirelessly pair with that action camera. So once you have updated the firmware for your Action 4, simply swipe down on the screen, press the settings icon and scroll down until you see the wireless mic option and then tap the wireless microphone box at the top of the menu. Then simply press and hold the linking button on the mic 2 until the blue light starts flashing and after a few seconds the mic 2 will pair with your Osmo Action 4 and it's as simple as that. If you want to pair the mic 2 to your smartphone, again simply put the mic 2 into pairing mode by pressing and holding the linking button until that status LED starts blinking blue. And now if you go to your Bluetooth settings on your smartphone, you will see the DJI mic 2 appear. So you want to press this to connect to the microphone. Although, once you do this, if you immediately start capturing footage with your iPhone, which is what I'm using, you still won't be able to get audio from the mic too, even though it's linked to your iPhone. And that's because you will need to use a third party app to be able to decide where the iPhone is capturing audio from on its videos. So for this, I use and recommend an app called Blackmagic Camera. 
but any video app where you can change the audio source will work. So with the Blackmagic camera app open, if you go to the settings menu and scroll down to the audio source setting, in here you can see and change from the iPhone microphone to the DJI mic too. And once you select this option, any footage you then capture with your phone using that app will have the audio from the mic to stored to that video. Lastly, if you want to connect the Mic 2 to your Mac, again, press and hold that linking button to put the Mic 2 into pairing mode, then go to the Mac System Preferences and select the Bluetooth option. Then the DJI Mic 2 should appear on this menu. And when it does, you simply want to click on Connect and now it's connected to the Mac. And that's how you compare this incredible little microphone to a range of devices you might already own. So that's 10 tips, including a bonus tip that helps make the DJI Pocket 3 even better. And hopefully these tips can help you get more unique, interesting, and cinematic clips with your Pocket 3. Now, if you want to learn even more about this little camera, then here is a video going over 100 tips, tricks, and hidden features that I highly recommend checking out by clicking up here or by clicking the link in the description down below.